بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أحبت في الله from the منهج of أهل السنة the methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah as we mentioned prior to this is avoiding backbiting avoiding غيبة in the Mima spreading tales about people and backbiting people and some of the examples from the speech of the Salaf, we already mentioned some of the Nasus from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And from the speech of the Salaf, we have Wa'an uh, Abdurrahman ibn Ghanam, يبلغ به نبي صلى الله عليه وسلم خيار عباد الله الذين إذا رؤوا ذكر الله وشرار عباد عباد الله مشاؤون بالنميمة المفرقون بين الأحبة الباغون للبراء العنت ومعنا باغون للبراء عنت أي الذين يحبون أن تقع مشقة للأبرياء وغالب لا يكون هذا إلا عن حسد وحقد عن عبد الله عن عبد الرحمن ابن غنم he said he was informed by the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that the best of the servants of Allah are those that when they are seen, they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or perhaps it might mean that when they show off, they return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, and the worst of the servants of Allah are those who carry tales of namima, you know, of backbiting, ghiba, or sp spreading tales and slander of the people. The ones who break up those who have love between them. So this is also the case of the believers. Ahl sunnah they have love for the, for the believers. Ahl sunnah make up the believers. So those people want to see evil spread between the believers through tales and backbiting. These are the ones who fit that characteristic or that description that the Prophet ﷺ mentioned. Al-Baghoon lil bara al anat those who love to see difficulty on the pious people, difficulty for the pious people. And they exhibit the characteristics of envy and hatred and jealousy. When Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhum aqal, qala rasulullahi, صلى الله عليه وسلم يا معاشر من أسلم بلسانه ولم يدخل إيمان في قلبه لا تؤذو لا تؤذو المسلمين ولا تعيرهم ولا تتبع عوراتهم فإن من اتبع العورات أخيه مسلم تتبع الله عورته ومن تتبع الله عورته يفضحه ولو في جوف رحله in this hadith, the hadith of Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhuma, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, O oh, uh, oh people, or O oh people who, who, are, uh, who give safety with their tongues, meaning they don't speak about people. He said that it doesn't enter the heart, uh, Iman doesn't enter the heart of someone who harms the believers and uh, criticizes them or uh, attacks their honor and follows their faults. For verily the one who follows the faults of his uh, brother Muslim, then Allah will follow his faults or expose him. And whoever Allah exposes his faults, then they will be exposed no matter how they are uh, tried to, try to, they try to hide. 
meaning try to hide their sins. And the Salaf used to say, وَقَدْ كَانَ السَّلَفْ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى مِنَ الشِّدَّ النَّاسِ بُعْدٍ عَنَ الْغِيبَةِ وَالْخَوْفِ مِنْهَا وَمِنْ ذَلِكَ مَا قَالَهُ بُخَارِي رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى سَمِعْتُ عَبَى عَاسِمْ يَقُولُ مُنْذُ إِنْ عَقَلْتُ إِنَّ الْغِيبَةَ هَرَامْ مَا اغْتَبْتُ أَحَدْ قَتْ so from the minhaj of the Salaf is that the Salaf were the furthest people from backbiting. And they were fearful of it, meaning fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sins that you would uh, acquire from backbiting. And from those examples is the example of Bukhari rahimahullah ta'ala, or what Imam Bukhari said, rahimahullah ta'ala. He said, I heard Abba Asim saying that from the time that I learned that ghiba, you know, backbiting was haram, I didn't backbite anyone ever. Waqalu Bukhari, Arju an alqa Allah, wala yuhasabini, enni yaghtabtu ahad. Imam Bukhari, Imam al Muhaddithin, he mentioned, he said, Rahimallah ta'ala, he says, I hope to meet. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that he does not hold me account for having backbitten anyone look at the look at the, the method of the salaf this is the minhaj of the salaf the minhaj of the salaf is not the youth with no knowledge speaking about everyone and every issue and may Allah forgive us and guide us and guide them I mean وقال Imam Dhahabi rahimahullah ta'ala Sadaqa rahimahullah wa man yandhru fi kalamihi fi al jarhi wa ta'deel alama war'ahu fi al kalami fi al nas wa insafihi fi man yad'afu hatta annahu qal idha qultu fulan fi hadithihi nadhr fa huwa muhtam wahu وَهَذَا مَعْنَا قَوْلُهُ لَا يُحَاسِبْنِي اللَّهِ أَنِّي أَغْتَبْتُ أَحَدًا وَهَذَا وَاللَّهِ غَايَةَ الْوَرَعَ So Imam Al-Dhahabi uh, said about Imam Bukhari, رحمه الله تعالى, that the, the statement we just mentioned by Imam Bukhari, he said, and speaking about Bukhari, he said, he spoke the truth and may Allah have mercy upon him. He said, and whoever analyzes his speech regarding Jarwa Ta'deel, meaning the science of criticizing uh, men with regard to the narrators of hadith, criticizing and praising them. He said, whoever looks to his speech regarding these issues, he will know his, his taqwa, his fearfulness, his humility, uh, regarding speaking about people. That Imam Bukhari was not simple and easy just to speak and he wouldn't backbite and, and attack the character of people, but he, had, he feared Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa in Safi, and he was just, another characteristic of Ahl Sunnah, with regards to those people who he considered da'if. So those people he considered da'if even, with regards to their narrate, narrations who he didn't want to take from, he was still just with them. And that's, that's, a, that's a characteristic of Ahl Sunnah that we should be just even with those we criticize, just with even our enemies. So how much more so with our brothers and sisters in Islam and those who try to adhere to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he said, Hatta أَنَّهُ قَالْ Even until he said, if it was said that so-and-so, his hadith has some, some issues or re requires observation, that he is, uh, that this individual has uh, weakness then this is the meaning of the statement of Imam Bukhari. Do, uh, I hope that Allah does not hold me accountable that I, ever back, ha, I had ever backbitten anyone. And this, Imam uh, Dhahabi said, Wallahi. He said, Wahada Wallahi ghayata wara. He said, and by Allah, I swear by Allah, that is the meaning or the, 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 the true essence of having 
humility and humbleness. And those are just some of the statements of the Salaf, and there are countless statements. And the point we wanted to make is that we shouldn't be quick to speak about others, and we shouldn't be quick to carry tales around the community, and we shouldn't be quick to speak about those things that we have no business speaking about, even if they may be true. If there is no benefit in mentioning it, then don't mention it. If there is no benefit to your religion and you're not warning the community of the believers with khabar thiqa, with, with real, authentic, truthworthy news about something or someone, then there's no benefit in mentioning it. And perhaps it may be in being something that's trustworthy, but there still may be no benefit in mentioning it. And so this is why it takes wara to be in this bab, even to speak about individuals from Ahl bidah It takes taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you do not transgress the bounds. You may transgress the grounds against your brother, and one day they may return from Ahl sunnah So then where are you? Where are you when you speak about them? And real, real stories, a real tale, I recall from Medina, a particular sheikh that many of the people used to respect. But he w deviated. And he spoke about one of the great mashayikh and imams of Ahl Sunnah in this time, Sheikh Rabi bin Hadi al Medkhali, <coughs> Sheikh Rabi uh, 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 al Medkhali, Hafidullah Ta'ala. He spoke about the sheikh and he, he mentioned some very severe speech which you don't expect to find from the from the ulama or this is not uh, something that's good to hear this kind of speech so how would a person who's spoken so harshly about someone how do they return back after your tongue is spit so much filth and so much attacks on ahl sunnah that yes you can come back but it's very difficult because you transgress bounds with regards to the haqq of the ulama. So be cautious when speaking about others. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.